Now we're going to talk about the specific output functions that are available on the quad six spreadsheets. That is the red column present here on the quad six spreadsheets. So with this drop down, you can change how the button behaves in a specific game. The default is normal, but we're going to talk about what a lot of these different output functions allow you to do in games and how they can be used to make gameplay more advantageous for specific users. These are very, very important to understand as they will allow the quad stick to be programmed to play more complex games as you can change how specific button functions to give a little bit of an advantage to a player using a sip and puff game controller. The first output function is the normal output function. This is the simplest one to understand because it just acts like a normal controller. For example, if I set the X button to be activated normally when I activate the center sip and puff, when I activate the center sip and puff on the quad stick, the button will just activate like a normal control button would on a controller. So as long as I'm blowing into that control on the quad stick, the button will be active in the game. And when I stop sipping or blowing into that button, it will release the button just like it would on a normal controller. Toggle is another output function and also a fairly easy one to understand. However, this one's super important as it gives you a lot of advantages in certain games. So toggle, what it allows you to do. So if I set a center puff to toggle on left two when I activate it on the quad stick, when I blow into the center sip and puff on the quad stick, it will hold down the L2 button in the game. And when I blow into the button again on the quad stick, it will release the button. Therefore, I don't have to keep on blowing into the center sip and puff to keep holding down L2 in the game. This is helpful in games like first person shooter games for the aim button in, the, in that game because the aim button needs to be held down while you're aiming. But if I set it to toggle, I can just simply blow into the center sip and puff on the quad stick and it will hold down the button for me. And when I wanna stop aiming, I just blow into it again to release the aim button. Now I'm gonna show example how toggle would work in a first person shooter game for the aim button. So typically in a first person shooter game, you have to hold down the aim button the entire time you're aiming. If I set the control for aim, which is L2 to toggle, I do the control on the quad stick, so I sipped in to activate the aim button, and now it's holding down the control for me in the game. If I want to deactivate it and stop aiming, I simply sip in again, and it will toggle off the aim button. So that way I don't have to keep on holding down the aim button if I want to shoot, and it will do it for me while I am just doing a quick sip in the quad stick input. Delayed latch acts like a combination between the normal output function and the toggle output function. So if I blow into a certain sip and puff on the quad stick for less than a preset amount of time, it'll act like a normal button does on a controller. However, if I blow into it for longer than a preset amount of time, it will toggle on that control and hold it down for me in the game. For example, if I set the X button to delayed latch after one second when I do the center puff on the quad stick, if I blow into the center puff for one le for less than one second, it will simply just tap the button normally like it does on a normal controller. However, if I activate the control for longer than one second, it will latch that control and toggle it on for me and keep it held down in the game until I blow into that center sip and puff again to release the control. Therefore, depending on how long I blow into the center sip and puff on the quad stick, it will either act like a normal button does or act like a toggle button. So this can be helpful in games where a button either needs to be tapped or it needs to be held down for a long duration. So for example, in Red Dead Redemption 2, the L1 button on the controller can be tapped to unholster or holster your gun, or if you hold it down, it can open up the weapon wheel. So here, the delayed latch feature might be helpful as it will allow the user to either tap the button to holster and unholster their gun or hold it down to open and close the weapon wheel. Now I'm gonna show an example of the delayed latch function on the quad stick. So in Fortnite, the left D-pad button can either be pressed or held down. And those give two different functions in the game. If I press the left D-pad button, which is the lip button in this case on the quad stick, it'll place my marker in a different location on the map. However, if I hold the button down, it'll bring up a wheel where I can choose between different options. And if I have the delayed latch function set, I can hold down the lip button 
and it'll latch on for me. So now it's toggled on, so I don't have to keep on holding down on the lip button to activate that button in the game. And to deactivate it, I press the lip button again, and to set a marker, I can tap. And then to open up the wheel again, I can hold. And when the second beep, go, beep goes, it will latch that input for me, and now it's held down in the game. So using the delayed latch feature, I can both tap the button and hold it down in the game. Repeat is a fairly simple output function to understand on the quad stick as well. So if I set X to repeat, as long as I'm blowing to the center sip and puff on the controller, what this will do is when I blow into the center sip and puff and keep blowing into it, it will repeatedly tap the X button in the game instead of holding it down. This can be helpful in games where you need to rapidly tap a specific button in the game. For example, when you sprint in Red Dead Redemption 2, you need to keep tapping the X button, and the faster you tap the X button, the faster you will sprint in the game. Therefore, to make it so the user doesn't have to repeatedly blow into the center sip and puff to activate the X button to sprint, this can be set to repeat, so they can just blow into the hole and keep blowing in, and it will repeatedly tap for them as long as they're blowing into that control on the quad stick. Now I'm going to show an example of the repeat function on the quad stick. I set the right sip to repeatedly tap the X button when I hold the sip on the quad stick. As you can see in the game, my player repeatedly jumps because the X button is jump in the game. And you can hear on the quad stick the activation of the input uh, repeatedly tapping when I continuously sip it on the quad stick. Therefore, I don't have to keep on sipping in. Like I usually would, I can just hold it. And it will repeat the input for me as I hold the sip or puff on the quad stick. Delay on and tap are a little bit more confusing output functions to understand, but they can be used together to allow one input on the quad stick to control two output outputs or buttons in a specific game. For tap, if the input is activated for less than a preset amount of time, it will activate a specific button on the controller. So in this case, if you blow into the center sip and puff for less than 500 milliseconds or half a second, it'll activate the X button. For delay on, it will activate that specific button after that input has been activated for a specific amount of time. So for example, in this case, if center puff is blown into for greater than one second or 1000 milliseconds, it'll activate the B button in the game. So in this case, if these two are used together, if I blow into the center sip and puff for less than half a second using the tap function, it'll activate the X button in the game. However, if I blow into the center sip and puff for greater than one second using the, the delay on feature in the output functions, it'll activate the B button. So, using this, these two together, you can allow the quad stick to activate two different buttons using the same input in a game. For the delay on and tap buttons, I can make one input on the quad stick control two different outputs in the game. In this case, when I tap or blow in the quad stick for less than 500 milliseconds or half a second, it'll activate the R3 or crouch button in the game. So I activated the input for less than half a second, so it activated the crouch button. However, I also set the delay on feature for one second to activate the triangle button in the game, which is switching weapons. So if I blow into the same input for greater than one second, it'll activate the triangle button and switch weapons in the game. So depending on how long I blow into the input, it will have different results as far as inputs in the game. Force off is also a slightly more confusing output function to understand. So what force off does is when you activate a certain control on the quad stick, so in this case, the center sip and puff, it will force turn off a specific control on the quad stick that was toggled on. So in this case, when I blow into the center sip and puff on the quad stick, it will release the left two button in the game. So if I had the left two button toggled down, it will release that button so it's no longer being held down in the game. 
I know a lot of people might be wondering, why would you ever want to force turn off a specific control in the game? So this can be helpful in a first person shooter game, for example, when your player is trying to sprint away, but the at left two button or the aim button is being toggled on or held down. And if you're trying to aim and both sprint away at the same time, your player is not going to be able to run away quite as fast. Therefore, by using the force off feature, what you can do is you can set when you activate the control for the sprint button, in this case the L3 button on the controller, being activated by the center sip and puff on the quad stick, it will also force turn off the aim button so it can make sure that your player is not aiming while they're also trying to sprint away in the game. Therefore, the player can get out of there in their full speed and not be aiming and not being able to sprint to their full speed in the game. Now I'm going to show an example of how I would use force off in a first person shooter game. So let's say I'm in a first person shooter game and I'm walking around and I'm aiming my gun. But let's say I'm in a situation where I need to get away quickly so I don't want to aim anymore. So if I hit the sprint button which is L3, I can start sprinting away as you can see it force turned off my aim button so I'm not aiming. Because if I aim, my player will automatically slow down and I won't be able to sprint. However, when I hit my sprint button, it will, it will force turn off the aim button so it's no longer being held down so my player can fully sprint. The greater than output function is also a fairly simple output function to understand. So if I set a greater than threshold for a specific input on the quad stick, that means that it has to be activated over a specific threshold before an output is activated in the game. So for example, if I set the joystick on the quad stick to activate the D-pad in the game, but I set a greater than 50% threshold on each of those joystick directions on the quad stick, I will be required to deflect the joystick above 50% its maximum set value before it activates that specific D-pad direction in the game. So if I wanted to activate the D-pad up button in the game, I would have to deflect the joystick above 50% its maximum value before it activates the D-pad up, up button in the game. If I activate it for less than 50% its maximum value, it will not activate any button. Therefore, the greater than function can allow specific outputs only to be activated when an input is activated over a specific threshold. For the greater than function, if my joystick is set for greater than 50% deflection activates the D-pad in each direction, I can move my joystick down a tiny bit, but it won't activate the D-pad on my controller. However, if I fully push down over the 50%, it will activate it because now it is past that threshold where it will activate that control in the game. So once again, if I do a little activation, it won't do anything, but if I do a big activation above the 50% threshold, it will activate the button in the game.